So ladies and gentlemen, if I ask you a question, who do you think is the most popular player of the 1980s and 1990s? Not talking about great great uh, production, but just overall a money player that uh, benefited all the squads he played for, uh, had fans from 2 to 102, scored big goals in regular season and playoffs and overtime. Uh, who would come to mind? Well, if it hasn't come to mind by now, I'm going to tell you, Russ Cortnall. Now, Russell William Cortnall uh, played for numerous teams in the NHL, most predominantly for the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Montreal Canadiens, the Stars, and the Bowden Incarnations in Minnesota and Dallas, the Vancouver Canucks, the New York Rangers, and LA Kings. Now, Cortnall was born in Duncan, B.C., but grew up in Oak Bay, British Columbia. Now, statistically, uh, they say he's 5'11", 175. He looks smaller like that in the ice because he had a Matt Snaslin uh, kind of compact uh, style. Now, Born, like I said, in uh, Duncan, coming out of junior hockey, he was considered one of the top prospects of his era. Now, he came to major prominence first with the Notre Dame Hounds of the SMHL uh, AAA format, and then with the Victoria Cougars, his draft year. He had 97 points in 60 games, uh, including 36 goals and 18, goals in the, 18 points in the playoffs. Now, his draft year was with Toronto. He took him uh, seventh overall. But he decided after his uh, uh, time with Victoria, he was going to play with the national team for a while. He did. Eventually, he ended up with the Maple Leafs, and he put up 12 points in 14 games in a very, very good uh, first part to his career. Now, uh, Toronto was really suffering at the time. Their dire needed scoring. Now, he kept him on as a rookie. Some people said he should have needed some more uh, seasoning. And his rookie campaign, he had uh, 22 points in 69 games. Now, although his goal production was not as high as the Maple Leafs had hoped for, his speed uh, opened up opportunities, especially for his linemates. Like I said, uh, a combination like a Cornway Naslin style, good playmaker, good on the wing, good open ice uh, skater. Now, he also played with Canada at the Olympics, who finished out of the medals, unfortunately, in '84. Now, in the '86 uh, season. He started playing alongside fellow Notre Dame Hound alumni Gary Lehman and rookie one Luke Clark on what was da- dubbed the Hound line. Cortnall uh, first broke his t- the 20 goal barrier that season, notching 22 to go along with 38 assists for 60 points. Now his offensive numbers improved the following year with 29 goals and 73 uh, points. Now Toronto was kind of getting into a rougher brand of hockey, and management was trying to uh, force Cortnall to do that. Uh, unfortunately, the club size defensive production decreased in the 88 season. Now, uh, 88 was uh, a mediocre uh, year for him. He only had uh, 49 points in 65 games. Now, 89 is probably one of the most controversial uh, trades uh, in history, uh, one side in many ways. The Maple Leafs eventually gave up on Cortnall and dealt him to the Montreal Canadiens for noted enforcer John Cordick. Although Cortnall's stock had clearly gone down the eyes of Maple Leafs management, most observers felt Cortnall uh, was a steal in that trade. Now, his time with Montreal really improved the Hab Stanley Cup uh, uh, fortunes. In that first season, Cortnall put up 39 points with Habs, but his fast skating and stick handling abilities made him a fan favorite. Cortnall played strongly in the playoffs where the Canadiens advanced to the Stanley Cup Finals against Calgary were lost to the Flames in six games. In 21 postseason games, he had a point-of-game pace with eight goals and 13 points. Now, Cortnall played for the Habs until 1991-92, when on August 31st, he was traded to the Stars for the 93 campaign. Uh, that year with, the, uh, to, with Minnesota really opened out a career-high 36 goals and 43 assists for 79 points. He followed that up with an 80-point season, the team's first year play in Dallas, and uh, later in the 95 season, in something that was predicted for many years, he was traded to the Vancouver Canucks, where he finally teamed up with his talented brother, Jeff Cortnall, for 13 games that year. Now, on March 8, uh, 97, Canucks traded Cortnall to Rangers, and on November 7, 97, Cortnall signed as a free agent with the LA Kings, where he played until his retirement following the 99 season. His career totals were very impressive, ladies and gentlemen. 297 goals, 447 assists, and 744 points in a 15-year NHL career. Now, uh, Cortnall off the ice has done a lot 
in the media and for hockey. He was a participant in the, both the second and third seasons of the Battle of Blades, the latter as a last-minute replacement for the late, late Wade Belak, but was eliminated early in the competition on both occasions. Now, he's played internationally uh, for Canada uh, at uh, numerous championships. In 1984, he had a big campaign at the World Juniors, uh, 13 uh, points in seven games. Olympic Games uh, that spring, or towards the spring, four points in seven games. 91 at the World Championships, he had four points in two games. And at the Canada Cup for uh, Canada in 91, uh, he had two assists in eight games. So just a tremendous player uh, for uh, the Canadian squads, tremendous player for the Stars program. Uh, I think really, ladies and gentlemen, he could easily have scored 400 goals, but he had a certain season he had, you know, there was a there was injury plague seasons, especially like uh, 92 when he only played 27 games. Uh, you know, um, uh, it was... The last two seasons in the NHL, like I said, he was doing spot duty. But I think 400 goals would have been capable. But, but, but you know, 1,029 games, 774 points. Really, really strong playoff, uh, man. 38 goals in 129 games. The only comparison I can give to him of the of the previous Montreal uh, teams, uh, teams that uh, obviously played with the CH, it's a combination, a little, a little bit of, a little bit of uh, Murray Wilson, a little bit of Matt Snaslin, a little bit of Cornway, a little bit of uh, Mike McPhee, you know, for scoring the big goals. Like, Montreal didn't have much too much of an offense in the years he played with him. But, you know, over three season, 22, 27, 26, every goal he scored was big. It was a game tying goal, it was a game winning goal, or it was something that, that contributed to a comeback for the squad. And, um, uh, the Canadian, uh, Montreal Canadiens French announcers basically call him the baby Naslin for a while. It didn't stick on, but I remember that. He said, this is this is the child of Matt Naslin. But when he got him for Cordic, ladies and gentlemen, oh, ooh, uh, it almost won as a cup. No disrespect to John Cordic. There's a podcast I did on John Cordic as well, if you want to. It is the number one podcast on my channel here. I get you to check it out. It talks a little bit about But Ross Courtnall once said in published reports, he said, uh... I didn't mean mine being traded to Montreal, but no offense, he said, you know, Cordic was good, but I mean, you know, Toronto didn't get anything for me. And if it was, it's still a head scratcher, he says, like he, he never uh, was bad being traded to Montreal, because he always wanted to play with Montreal, but John Cordic's skills as a defenseman and a, and a part-time forward were of Cordic's uh, talent. Uh, the, other, the other player that's a comparison, and there's a podcast on this player as well, Brian Savage. That's what I forget to tell you. Kind of like a Brian Savage as well. Every Montreal fan loves Russ Courtnall. Russ Courtnall was the teddy bear of the Habs. Every young kid, every woman between the ages of, you know, 16 and 116. Love, handsome guy, personable. Fans loved him. Russ, Russ, Russ. Anyway, so thanks for listening. Have a good day. Bye.